This is a video from the Department of Medicine, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. In this module, we shall learn how to insert a central venous catheter. Before I begin, I am Shubham and I'd like to thank my colleagues and the Department of Medicine for providing me with this opportunity. Central venous catheterization is defined as the placement of a catheter into a large vein, such as subclavian vein, internal jugular vein, or superior vena cava. Internal jugular, subclavian, and femoral veins are the most commonly used veins for the insertion of a central venous catheter. In this video, we shall demonstrate how to insert the catheter into the In this module, we shall learn indications and contraindications for insertion of a central line. Technique for insertion of a central line, complications associated with insertion of a central line, and post insertion care of the central line is used to monitor parameters such as central venous pressure and pulmonary artery pressure, deliver chemotherapeutic drugs, total parental nutrition and vasopressors, and provide access for blood circuits such as hemodialysis and plasma exchange. The contraindications include Infection of the area overlying target vein, such as cellulitis, thrombosis of the target vein, distorted anatomy, uncorrected coagulopathy, and thrombocytopenia. Coagulopathy and thrombocytopenia are relative contraindications to insertion of a central line. In such scenarios, ultrasound guided central line insertion must be considered. Before you begin, Explain the procedure to the patient and the patient's attendant. Obtain informed consent either from the patient or his attendant. Check medical records for contraindications such as thrombocytopenia and deranged INR. And locate landmarks for localization of the internal jugular vein. The equipments required for the insertion of line include sterile gown, cap, gloves and mask, heparinized saline, lignocaine or any other local anesthetic medication, sterile drape and gauze, skin preparation by betadine or chlorhexidine, suture and needle driver, syringes, and central line set. The central line set consists of a syringe, vascular access needle, guide wire, vascular dilator, double or triple lumen line, scalpel, and the caps of the respective ports. Once all the equipments have been arranged, place the patient in Trendelenburg position not more than 15 degrees. This decreases the risk of air embolism and also encourages the vein. Turn the head to the opposite side. Locate the internal jugular vein at the apex of triangle found by the sternal and clavicular heads of sternocheidomastoid. It is located just lateral to the internal carotid artery. The needle is inserted at this point and directed towards the ipsilateral nipple. It is advised to use ultrasound to determine the potency and localization of the internal jugular vein. It is also advised to use ultrasound to guide venipuncture at the time of vessel cannulation. The ultrasound probe should be directly kept over the needle insertion site to identify and localize the underneath. The jugular vein can be localized by applying a gentle pressure by the linear probe. The carotid artery, due to its tough muscular sheath, does not collapse by applying pressure, whereas the jugular vein collapses. Carefully remove all the possible things that can contaminate the site of insertion. Prepare the area by scrubbing with chlorhexidine or povidone iodine for minimum 60 seconds. Drape the area carefully and make sure to include all the important landmarks within the sterile field. Prepare the linear probe with povidone iodine followed by sterilium. Chlorhexidine can also be used if available. Wrap the linear probe in a sterile sleeve. 
Be careful not to contaminate the sleeve prior to placing the probe on the sterile field. Open the central line set. Use HEPS align to flush all the ports of the line. Keep the longest port uncapped so that the guide wire can be threaded through this port at the time of insertion. Infiltrate the insertion site with local anesthetics such as 1% lidocaine to help minimize pain. Reconfirm the position of the jugular vein by gently applying pressure by the linear probe. You can also use a dilator to mark the point of insertion. Insert the needle at a 45 degree angle at the middle border of the sternal credomastoid. The long axis of the needle must be directed towards the ipsilateral nipple. Gently suction as you go deep. Once you begin to withdraw blood in the syringe, confirm the position of the tip of the needle using ultrasound. Carefully thread the guide wire through the other end of the needle. The assisting doctor must keep a close watch on the ECG monitor. If arrhythmias are noticed on the monitor, withdraw the guide wire to a distance where the arrhythmias disappear. Remove the needle keeping the guide wire in position and feed the dilator through the guide wire. This would dilate the track into the jugular vein for smooth insertion. Feed the catheter over the guide wire, being certain to maintain control of the guide wire. Before advancing the catheter through the skin, pull the wire slightly out until the external end of the wire extends outside the catheter hub and can be grasped. Use needle holder or a forceps to grasp the external end of the wire and carefully feed the catheter into the jugular vein. Insert the catheter to a depth which places the catheter tip at the junction of superior vena cava and Steady the catheter and use forceps and take out the guide wire and check for blood return. Confirm that all the ports of the catheter are working and flush them with heparinicaline. Cap all the ports of the catheter at completion. Confirm the position of the catheter using the linear probe, preferably along the long axis of the catheter. Carefully secure the line by suturing it to the underlying skin. Apply sterile dressing over the line. Your line is henceforth ready for use. Obtain a post-procedure chest x-ray to confirm the position of the central line. The tip of the line should lie at the junction of superior vena cava and the right atria. The chest x-ray is also important to note post-procedure complications such as pneumothorax and hemothorax. The complications that occur during central venous catheter insertion include arterial puncture, arrhythmias, pneumothorax, and hemothorax. Arterial puncture is one of the most common complications which occur during central line insertion. This can be recognized prior to insertion of the line by observing the flow and color of blood in the syringe. A pulsatile flow and bright red color indicate arterial blood. In case of discrepancy, an arterial blood gas analysis can be done to confirm. Arrhythmias may be observed post insertion and indicate that the line is inside the heart and needs to be withdrawn. Insertions can also be complicated by pneumothorax and hemothorax, some of which are massive and require surgical intervention. Hence, vitals should be thoroughly recorded after the procedure. Once the line has been inserted, it is important to access the line under sterile and clean conditions. It is important to prepare the access site with alcohol-based solutions and minimize number of times the line is accessed. It is important to change the sterile dressing once in 2-3 to three days and reassess the need for central line daily.
A central venous line is a convenient and often necessary tool in the management of the critically ill patient. However, one must always be aware of the related infections and complications associated with its insertion.